today is dress down t-shirt day and I am lucky I even have a t-shirt on my back because today we're making t-shirt quilts. This quilt was made for me by my friend Marsha Lasher. She's been my friend since the late 70s. What a great friendship. Now she started out in the very center with the logo quilt in a day and added the signature block the log cabin right underneath and then she put my picture photo transfer framed me with a circle of rickrack and in the corners are four little star appliques I guess that's just symbolic of my life now let's start up in the right hand corner happy 20th winning combination that's a photograph of my sons and I, it's a Brant and Orion, just about the time I started Quilt in a Day. The one in the middle is from the intro page to the Log Cabin 20th anniversary. Great photo. And this is actually the logo that we used that year, 1978 to 98 20th anniversary. Well, this t-shirt represents the year I went to Paducah, Kentucky and did my sunbonnet Sioux show. Oh, my bonnet's on, my streamers are flowing. Pedal to the metal, on the road with Eleanor Burns. I guess I'm always on the road. Well, over here is my signature saying, Eleanor Burns made a stripper out of me. Strips flowing in the air. Banner text honored me with anniversary florals by Eleanor Burns. That was my first fabric line. That year we were working on grandmother's garden. Lots of flowers, lots of basket weave fabric. And then down in the bottom is Quilt in a Day, the building that we work in with Rick Rack surrounding it. Marcia took leftover pieces from three of the t-shirts, sewed those all together so she could make one larger block. And then right over here is a drawing that Debbie Smith did. Old drawing, I love what it says. It says, I believe in miracles. I made a quilt in a day. That is a miracle. And then right here, is my evening party photograph that was taken at still stripping after 25 years. Well, this whole quilt suits me to a T. So let's get started. I'm gonna cut out my favorite t-shirt. Eleanor Burns made a stripper out of me. I want to show you the material girls and I certainly turned them into strippers. This is from the quilt festival in Houston, Texas. Oh my gosh, we love to wear our bows. Too much fun. Well, when you start out with your t-shirt, you should launder it. Make sure there aren't any spots that you can take out. Clean it up or repair it as best as you can. And then just lay it out flat on a big cutting mat. You need to have your 6 by 24 inch ruler. This is one long t-shirt. First thing you want to do is just line up your ruler along the side. Just trim off the side. Oh, we're not going to waste this. This is my favorite cloth for cleaning my glasses. Completely recyclable. Okay, and then just turn your ruler Cut along into the neckline. That's a piece there. Let's get this neckline here. This is really fun. Best way to use up all of your old dirty t-shirts, things you don't wear. You know, even styles change with t-shirts. So it's a great way to make a quilt that you'll just remember your favorite t-shirt forever. Well, the fun thing about this t-shirt is that we have the front with the logo, and we also have the back with the um, photograph of me. Oh my gosh, this was drawn years ago when I had really huge glasses. Look completely different now, but still fun. We'll take this, lay it out flat, and cut some light to medium weight, non-woven, fusible interfacing. You want to cut it about an inch shorter. So I'm just gonna lay it out. It's got a smooth side and it's got a bumpy side. Well, the bumpy side is the fusible side and that's the side that you wanna put up, right up against the wrong side of your shirt. Now, this is definitely gonna cover the signature right here, but this is so long that I'm not gonna waste the bottom part of this. I'm just gonna take and cut off 
a five inch strip for the logo across the front. That way we'll get really good use out of this fusible interfacing. Now, have my iron getting nice and hot. So take and put, um, put like a pressing cloth down in the bottom. Oh my gosh. If you press some of this painting, some of the letters will come off. So just put a, a pressing cloth on the bottom on your pressing mat. Line up the um, place that you want to cover on top. And next comes the interfacing. And just make sure that you don't have any interfacing hanging over because if you um, actually press this to your pressing cloth, it's going to make a really sticky mess. You've got to be very careful with this right now. So I'm just going around giving it a little steam. Make sure that it's nice and hot. Let me slide this along here. Shot of steam. Hey, I think this is looking good. Ooh, I see it's peeled up at the top. Take some time, about eight to 10 seconds, and get this done. And now I want to just shift this over, and I want to press this narrow strip right across the logo quilt in a day. I have so much fun wearing this t-shirt. One time, an older man stopped me. He said, young lady, you shouldn't wear that t-shirt. Do you know what that means? Of course, I know what that means. It's too much fun. Well, another friend told me that um, she was wearing her t-shirt among a crowd of young uh, people, and they were really studying her and looking at her t-shirt, and the next thing, they came up to her and said, we really like your t-shirt. Now, where do you strip? <laughs> so she got a big chuckle over that one. And this is my favorite one. I love it whenever people come to me and say, who is Eleanor Burns anyways? <laughs> Too much fun. Great t-shirt to wear. Okay, I think that these are both fused down perfect. So let's just go ahead and cut this so it's ready for sewing. I'm going to switch and use my 12 and a half inch square up ruler. And I put some glow line tape across the um, diagonal line so I can find the perfect center. Now this is a good size to make for ladies. Uh, around a 12 and a half, no bigger than 14. And for children, you might want to just make a nine inch, but this is a great ruler to use. Yeah, I'm just going to focus right here on the rotary cutter on her hand. Just hold this down and cut on all four sides. If you can just swing it around like that and then just turn and go across the bottom. Not moving it at all. Great. Let's see if I can just peel this away. And we've got one all ready to go. Perfect. And now this one, I'd like to sew several together. And so I'm going to just trim this one up so that it's about 12 and a half by four and a half. Let me use my longer ruler and center that, get it all lined up. Zip across here and up. And then I'm just going to turn it and trim so that it's four and a half by 12 and a half. Line this up perfectly, trim it, and I've got two out of one t-shirt. Great! Let me get my sewing machine and I'll show you how to sew the blocks together. If you have logos down the sleeve of your shirt, then you can cut off that long strip and sew a couple of them together, just like I'm going to do with my quilt in the day. Now I made them each four and a half, so by the time they're all sewn together, this will be another 12 and a half inch block. So cute. Now, I love this shirt. Obviously wore it a lot. My gosh, I need to wear a bib whenever I'm out. But I got all kinds of stains on the front of it. But the sleeves were terrific. So I just cut off the sleeves and now I can use them. Very patriotic and quite a large piece of fabric. Now I want to take four blocks and sew them together into another block. So I need to have four six inch blocks. So I'm just going to turn this around like this and trim. And that's ready to go. 
I love it. And this was the matching one, the opposite side. Kind of a funky t-shirt, but I still liked it. Now, I found this great logo on one of our Quilt in a Day shirts. Orion gave it to me. He said he wasn't going to wear it anymore. I said, oh my gosh, Orion, you know if you just sell it on the internet, you'd probably make a lot of money. No dice. So this one, I'm going to make sure I center. I'm using that diagonal line on the star with my six and a half inch ruler and just trim this one. And we'll have four pieces. The original size with the seam allowance included is six and a half down to six. And let's see, I just couldn't stand cutting up this t-shirt so I actually used a second square so that whenever I set these together this is the way that patch is going to look. And I even found some star buttons. I'm going to sew it on the plain one. That's cute. You just have so much fun. Well, I found one of my dad's old t-shirts. Oh, my mom was always fussing at him because he wore them way too long. And when I found this one, I knew we should have gotten rid of it earlier. Nagel Heating. My dad had a heating and air conditioning company. There's a little tear right here. So I cut off the buttons and I'm just going to sew that button right over that spot. It'll look great. I just need to find the right colors to go with it. And this one is one of my favorites. This is my baby lock shirt. It did have a collar on it and I wanted to use it. So I decided to just put some of that red fabric, more of that red, right behind the neckline. And I want to sew right down along here now with a zigzag stitch so I can use this one. I took off the buttons because I was pretty sure that those buttons would just get in the way. I set up my machine with a zigzag stitch and I have my all-purpose foot on quite thick and I'm just going to take that wide zigzag and just stitch through all thicknesses. When I get down here, I'm just going to curve around, get down to the end, finish sewing off. Ooh, it's looking good. How about a lock stitch and cut those threads and let's see how it looks. So that you can actually utilize all different kinds of shirts. You could do a tank top and you could put a big piece of fabric behind the tank top so it looks like this. So once I go back along here, and just sew these buttons back on. It is going to be the cutest thing ever. I've been working on a quilt for Grant. Now, I already made one for Orion, so I want to get all of Grant's pieces, and I'll show you how to lay it out. Orion helped me pick out the t-shirts, and they look great. They tell the story of Grant's elementary years, and then we jump into his adult years. Oh my gosh, he was such a jock. He was an all-star athlete and doing all kinds of things, running, jumping, oh, perfect all the time. So we couldn't wait to put this one in. He ran with my sister in a 10K in Butler, Pennsylvania. He was born in Butler. What fun he had that day. He loved it. And then he ran in the turkey trot at the Carlsbad Parks and Rec Everybody won a turkey that day. Well, not only did he love to run, but he loves to eat. And so we found the young people's pig out. Perfect for Grant. He went wind sailing, took lessons. And this one is such a treasure because I found his um, Cardinals emblem. Never sewed it on anything. So we actually put his photograph on the t-shirt. And I'm just going to stitch this down. Better late than never, huh? Flora Vista kids are number one. Well, I have a scrapbook of a number of these. Exactly when the events happen. And you can see Flora Vista School, Grant Burns, first place. Great. This one is our favorite. Here he is in the race in Butler with my sister. Out in front wearing that red t-shirt. Well, he must have loved that t-shirt. Because, once again, he's wearing that same t-shirt right here in the pig out event. So much fun. Well, now he's manufacturing skateboards. And this is some of his new artwork. This is very current with bareback skateboards, 
looks great. And then he has another company. He has a longboard company, Lucky Joe. It's free ride with the skateboard logo right there. So much fun. Well, we picked out masculine pieces of fabric. Oh, we put stars in there. I mean, Orion's a star, but Grant is too. And so now I'm going to lay out lattice between all of these blocks. I've got to do some separation so that I can sew vertical rows with the lattice. And then we're going to use these gold cornerstones in between. It's looking good. Let me just add one right along the edge so you can see. We didn't want to have flowers. We didn't want it to look too feminine. Heaven's sake. So we've gone with this star print. Now you get the idea. What a touch. This is going to be dark navy to frame the whole quilt, followed by that same gold that we're using as the cornerstones, narrow strip, and then a very wide strip of those stars. I can't wait to sew this together. I placed the lattice and cornerstones between each of the blocks, and then I sewed the vertical rows from top to bottom. Now you don't clip those connecting threads as you go from one block to the next because it's just like putting a pin in. Great! It's all lined up and ready to go across the opposite way. Now when you take and flip this row right sides together to the second row, you always press your seam towards the lattice. It's a rule to remember. Here it's towards the lattice and underneath it's towards the lattice. And whenever you do that, you create locking stitches right here. Locking seams. You just kind of squeeze that together and they should line up perfectly. Let's just go ahead and try the luck. Now the cornerstones are two and a half inches square. The lattice is two and a half inches by the length of the block. So you really have to get your um, blocks completely squared up before you start cutting your lattice. Okay, let's just stop and readjust. Okay, I'm going over here, going right to this lattice, seam towards the lattice, seam towards the lattice. So now I've gone about halfway. I'm just going to hold on right here. Usually don't use pins, but you just hold and then if you have to stretch or you have to ease so this fits in perfectly, from one seam to the next. At this point, oh my gosh, the seam, the whole quilt top is pretty heavy. So you have to kind of sh just shift it around. Oh, you start aching your back, but it works out great. Okay, I'm just gonna continue a little bit more right past this. Seams are towards the lattice on both the top and on the bottom and they're locking together. I'm just going to stop. We'll take a peek and see how that looks and see if the match is perfect. Maybe I should look first, huh? Oh, it's looking great. Pretty good right there. Coming along perfect. Good. So once you go across all of these seams, I'm going to go this way. I've got a couple already sat and worked last night and did the bottom half. Let me show you that whenever you're done, you've pressed your seams now away from the block. So they're all going in and you can see how flat they lay. All towards the lattice and now towards the lattice. Perfect flat. I'm going to finish those rows and I'll show you the borders. My borders are stacked just as they were cut. I want to show you how to assembly line sew them into long strips. The first thing you want to do is trim off the salvage edges and you can just layer cut. Just make sure you go in deep enough so you get all of the salvage. Oh my goodness, you do not want to have salvage in your borders. You'll never win at the quilt show. Don't rearrange, just put the stack like this but take the top one and fold it back. Well, the next two are already right sides together. So you can just slip those two under your sewing machine and stitch right across there. Don't take them out of your machine, but keep on going through this stack. The next two are also right sides together. So just keep on going. I love to do borders this way. Now you can make a decision. 
On the binding, you're going to want to continuously sew all of them together. But for the quilts, for the sides of the quilt, you might want to just do two strips at a time so that they're long enough for the sides. Okay, so I've got them chained together. Just go ahead, clip them apart, and I like to press my seams open on my borders. You can do this at the iron, press the seam open, and also press out the fold so that you have really flat strips and ready to go. Well, we already uh, measured the sides of this quilt. We took a long tape measure. You need to have some help and measure both sides and the middle and make sure you write them down. Hopefully they're the same. They may be a, an eighth of an inch or so off, but take an average of the three measurements and cut your two side borders, that measurement. And then I personally like to do some pinning. You always start and pin the center of the border in the center of the quilt. And then go to the ends. And if you're going to sew with uh, go, going over the pins, you want to take and pin from the inside edge out. I like to sew with my quilt on top because I, I just want to sew all of those seams exactly as they were pressed. And so, just go ahead, start sewing down the side, and as you get to that seam, make sure you press it flat as it was originally pressed. And I'm just going to show you really quick as if I did that whole side. Take and set the seam so that you um, set the stitches into the fabric and then from the border side, open and press the seam right behind the border and you will have a wonderful quilt. Grant's t-shirt quilt is now finished and I know he's going to love it. Amy Potter did the long arm quilting and she added some great personal touches. He loves the San Diego Chargers. So Amy quilted footballs in the cornerstones in gold thread and lightning bolts in the border. Well, these worn out t-shirts feel so cozy. I know he's gonna love to snuggle in it with the grandbabies. Well, this is Orion's t-shirt quilt. Now, some of the shirts are the same ones we selected for Grant's quilt, but that makes sense since they are brothers. But we tried to put in Orion's favorite things, like Tabitha, his chocolate lab. Well, this one is a memory, Orion playing for the Cardinals baseball team. I selected a star fabric for his namesake for the lattice and border. The green just brightens up all of the blocks. I love it. Well, well, we'll move from the guys to the girls. This is Amber Varn's quilt made for her by her mother, Teresa. Well, Amber is an extremely talented, beautiful young woman. The t-shirts have been collected from a very early age when she went to grade school up to high school when she became homecoming queen. Well, this block contains a collar from Amber's shirt. Teresa used team logos from the fronts of Amber's shirts plus logos from their sleeves. Very clever. The numbers represent our numbers from the different volleyball teams. Amber loves volleyball. Well, I have two t-shirts that tell the stories of two men's lives. This quilt was made by Janet Bragdon for her husband, Danny. He served with the Navy from 1970 to 2003. These t-shirts are memories of the Navy SEALs. I'm sure this shirt brings back memories. Cold, wet, tired, and miserable. From basic underwater demolition and SEAL training. And I love this one. The only easy day was yesterday. Sometimes I feel that way. You know, some of these t-shirts are 30 years old. Obviously, Janet is very proud of her husband. Now, Mary Jo Rambolt did loose stippling around the blocks and stippling connected with stars in the border. Well, the backing fabric is with the navy emblem. Very nice, very patriotic. Well, these historic t-shirts are from 10 years 
of 4th of July parades in Julian, California. Just what a great parade. Diana Garrett designed and made this quilt for Jim Mazzone, the parade coordinator. What a special way of honoring and remembering all of Jim's hard work and generosity. This is a photograph of Julian Town Hall with soldiers from 1776 to 2005. And this is recent with Welcome Home and Serving Today for Tomorrow's Freedom. Diana clustered four smaller logos from shirt fronts and sleeves for this block. And then she stitched in the ditch around the blocks and lattice. The patriotic backing of stars and stripes is perfect. And she even sewed on a label. So take those t-shirts, cut them up, and preserve history. Mm -hmm.